Okay, let's go to the next part of your research paper, which will be the introduction. When you do the introduction, of course, the main point of the introduction is to introduce the problem that you're researching. And I think this is a good point. Problem, right? The problem. What is the issue you're researching? This is why I often re-emphasize to my students over and over again, please remember, you need to have a very specific problem that you're researching. Not something general, but a very specific problem. Present that specific problem that you're studying inside your introduction. Describe the research strategy. And a lot of people miss this. You need to really introduce to the reader, why did you do what you did? Why did you begin where you begin? Why did you choose to interview people in, in the Philippines? Why not in India? Why did you choose to survey people in Taipei and not in Tainan? Why did you choose to talk about restaurant satisfaction rather than airport service satisfaction? You know, so you really need to explain how your research came about is, is kind of the basic idea. You don't need to have a heading at the beginning saying introduction because right after the title you begin writing that is the introduction section. But again, it depends, it always depends on your journal, your school, your department. What are their requirements? APA says you do not need to have a heading that says introduction. We just begin. But maybe at your school, maybe your professor, maybe at the journal you're sending to, they do need to have the heading introduction. In any case, the introduction comes at the beginning of your research paper. We know that. When you're writing your introduction, the things you need to keep in mind include why is this an important problem? How does this study relate to other previous work? So that's your literature review. How does this report differ? What are you doing that's different from other research that came before? What is the primary and secondary hypotheses? So your hypotheses come in this introduction section. So often we have the introduction, and then you're going to have a subsection called hypothesis, uh, called literature review, and then you're going to have a subsection called hypotheses, or maybe as you write your literature review, you one by one make up your hypotheses. That's very normal too. But these hypotheses, your primary and secondary hypotheses, do come in this area. How are these hypotheses related, related to theory? And how does your research design test your hypotheses? So it's very normal that people have a hypothesis, but then it's not really a testable hypothesis. So please keep in mind, in your hypothesis, when you write it, you need to show how is this going to be tested? How is this testable? A key idea to our research. And then in your introduction, you can also include what are the theoretical and practical implications of this study. So the background, how did you get to here? How did you develop it? What's the point of this? Why is it important? What's the literature that came before? Who did research that's similar to this? What research are you building on? And then why is this important? What's the question I'm going to actually test? How do I think I'm going to test it and answer this question? Not the methodology, methodology is later, but how is it that this experiment, how is it that this survey, how is it that this study is going to test that hypothesis? Now, of course, you don't always have a hypothesis. You could at times also have a, a research question, for example. So a research question, RQ, hypothesis H, these are quite different. You may actually just have a general research question. You may have no research question at all, but it depends on what kind of research you're doing. In most cases, we would have a hypothesis, which is testable, or a research question, which is something you're adding information to.